Surface Duo. What a funky little device. He had two HD screens, a 360 degree hinge, and a clamshell design even classier than Microsoft's proper Surface tablets. It feels so great to just hold in the hand, and its design bleeds style. Yet, when it launched almost a year ago, it got pretty middling reviews due to less than stellar software performance. No doubt this didn't help its sales, which have been rocky, to put it lightly. Anyone hearing all this might be liable to think that the Duo's not worth their time. And, you know, fair. But those people are really missing out. And here's why. Before we get into why you should buy the Duo, I think it's only fair to give a recap of the phone's reception. Now, as I mentioned, reviews for the Duo weren't that great. Reviewers experienced extremely buggy pre-release software, severe lag opening apps, and a less than competent camera. Combined with the $1,400 price tag at launch, uh, I wouldn't blame anyone for having written the Duo off as some neat prototype that Microsoft hadn't fully fleshed out yet. Yeah. By the time the Duo arrived in September 2020, most of the random software issues had been fixed with a software update. Microsoft has since released updates every month addressing most lingering issues. As of today, any problems are pretty rare and tend to disappear quickly after restarting the phone, if they happen at all. And although I can't emphasize enough how much the camera continues to be pretty terrible for anything but quick snaps and video chats. If you're looking for a primary phone with an amazing camera anyway, I'd honestly recommend going with something like an iPhone SE or Pixel 5a. And those comparisons are really key here because those devices are roughly the current price of the Duo and one of the biggest reasons why it's worth giving the Duo a shot. Over the past year, the price of the Surface Duo has dropped tremendously. As of this video, you can buy a Duo from Microsoft for around $700, or from a third-party seller like Woot or Bydig for under $400. That sucks for people like me, who paid twice that amount at launch, but for anyone buying the device now, it's just low enough price to place it in competition with mid-range phones instead of the high-end flagships and the $1,000 plus price range where it started. Now, compared to the flashiest flagships around the Duo's launch price, like the Z Fold 3 or the iPhone 13 Pro Max, the Duo feels like a compromise. The form factor is fantastic, but the lack of software polish, NFC, and solid camera make it a harder recommendation compared to the biggest, baddest devices out there. But at under $700, the context shifts tremendously. At that price range, we start comparing it to phones that launched in the mid-range with their own sets of compromises. Compared to them, the Duo feels like a more solid competitor and a truly outstanding choice for anyone either interested in the latest, greatest tech or a unique form factor that no other device on the market has. And talking about that form factor for a second, that's really where the Duo differentiates itself as a productivity powerhouse. The Duo won't be winning any foot races against the latest, greatest flagship slab phones, but choosing those phones requires you to make severe compromises to productivity and multitasking due to either operating system or screen size limitations. Take Samsung's Galaxy S phones as an example. Samsung's been working split-screen features into their phones for years, which is nice, but actually using two apps at the same time on their phones is a bit of a hassle. Both apps are small as heck due to the screen, and not all apps function exactly as I'd like them to. Now, Samsung has recently worked around these issues for their Z Fold devices but that'll also run you a much higher price than the Surface Duo. Don't get me wrong, Android still limits the Duo quite a bit, but that's because it's the first dual-screen phone with an actual chance of succeeding. Unlike typical slab phones, opening two apps at once on the Duo means that you get the full benefit of a display for each app. 
Now, if you've ever watched any coverage of a dual or split screen phone, you've probably seen the typical example of watching YouTube or Twitch while also browsing Twitter at the same time, which yeah, you can totally do that if you want. That's only the tip of the iceberg though. I found myself doing things like scrolling through Twitter and Tumblr at the same time, browsing Reddit while playing Pokemon Go, or checking the definition of a word before sending a text. Spanning apps across both screens also makes scrolling through websites and articles so much more comfortable. None of this will magically make you more productive on your phone, but it gives you more space and flexibility to use your pocket computer in the most productive ways possible. Also, now, can we just take a minute to appreciate the 4x3 display? Uh, it's just short enough for me to reach the top and bottom with one hand, and while that extra width takes a bit of reach, the trade-off is that articles and posts can fit more lines of text on the screen at once, making everything so much more comfortable to read. That set of displays takes us to the third reason to buy a dual. Gaming. Now, yeah, there are plenty of fairly priced phones made specifically for gaming. If you're looking to play modern games on a duo, you also have to accept that the scaling to a 4x3 display works well sometimes, but not others. Plus, the two-year-old Snapdragon 855 chipset also means that you likely won't get bleeding edge performance to go with your bleeding edge design. None of that really matters, though, in the scheme of things, because if you're buying a Duo for gaming, you're actually buying it for emulation. Older consoles and handhelds tend to output video aspect ratios more closely resembling the Surface Duo's 4x3 screens than the 20x9-inch aspect ratios employed by most other phones on the market. When emulating those sorts of games on other phones, you often get black bars surrounding the game or pretty terrible stretched out images from games that were never meant to be played in widescreen. Even when stretching games to fit the duo's aspect ratio, there's rarely an issue with the result. Plus, for less action-oriented games, having the second screen double as a touch controller is super helpful. Touch controls on single screen devices often obscure the screen quite a bit or feel a bit cumbersome to use. So it's nice to move the controls and my hands out of the way. This is especially true for DS emulation. By far, this is the best phone on the market for emulating DS games. Both the Duo's screens match the DS's aspect ratio perfectly and dwarf those of a new 3DS XL. Either screen is plenty large for touch input and unlike actual DS handhelds, is extremely smooth and responsive even while using your finger, while still having a case that's half the width. Having recently backed up most of my DS and 3DS games, I've been really enjoying the new 2DS Triple XL, I mean Surface Duo, a lot recently for emulation alone. While a regular 2DS XL can be had for half the price of a Surface Duo these days, if you're looking for a versatile, dual screen emulation machine that doesn't require modding to play older games or your stash of ROMs, there's really nothing out there quite like the Duo. So what do you think? Are the new lower prices, abundant multitasking options, or unique emulation abilities enough to make you pick up a Surface Duo? Are you rocking an even cooler phone that you think leaves a Surface Duo in the dust? Let me know down in the comments. Also, if you really love this video, show it some love with a hearty thumbs up. I'm planning more tech videos in the near future, including some impressions on the new Z Fold 3. So definitely smack that subscribe button if you want to see more. Until next time, catch you later.